dear friends, we are very happy to welcome uh, Dr. Vasudevan Nayar uh, to Chandigarh. Uh, just to introduce him briefly, uh, he accepted the Baha'i faith in Malaysia, uh, being from Hindu background, after a lot of investigation. Then uh, Dr. Vasudevan has a lot of qualifications from England. Uh, uh, on uh, specializes in uh, grammar schools and teaching at grammar schools and uh, he then came to he traveled to various countries and he came to India where he met his wife and I think they're married for about 40 45 years or even more now and uh, the beautiful part of his life is that he is from Hindu background he's a Baha'i from Hindu background and his wife is a Baha'i from Zoroastrian background and he is a Malaysian and his dear wife is an Indian. So, and then Professor, uh, Dr. Vasudevan was the principal of New Era International School in Panchkani, where children of famous actors have studied and it's a very prominent school in our country, India. And uh, also he was a very high ranking official, he has been all the time a great teacher of the faith and a high ranking officer of the Baha'i faith. So I wish to welcome uh, Dr. Vasudevan to this wonderful program. We have been with him in the winter school at Chandigarh and we have been enlightened by his talks and the insights that he has given. Now in this very brief program uh, of maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes, we'll try to cover his understanding of the Baha'i teachings and how he became a Baha'i. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good uh, beginning point, Dr. Vasudevan. Thank you. Uh, Thank I you. want to uh, request you to tell our viewers how from Hindu bag background you accepted the Baha'i faith and the manifestation of God for this age, Baha'u'llah. Mm -hmm. And did you have any feelings that it is sounds like a Muslim name and it may have something to do with uh, Islam being the, the faith coming from Iran? Uh, tell us this beautiful story, how you became a Baha'i. <laughs> when I first went, entered a Baha'i center in Malacca, Malaysia, the first thing that struck me was a beautiful atmosphere of the Chinese and the Indian people who were there in the Baha'i center, speaking to each other and so on. I was very, very impressed by the, by the wonderful atmosphere. Only a non-Baha'i could see what goes on between the Baha'is and the attitude and the love with which they speak to each other. And that impressed me quite a bit. I relaxed for a while till I saw on the wall of the Baha'i Center uh, a banner. Baha'i, the union of all people in the universal cause, one common faith. This was very impressive. So I asked them what it was. And when they said it, I had only one question. And this reflects my background. I said, Uncle Leong, he was a wonderful Baha'i. So Chinese Baha'i teacher, Chinese first Baha'i from Chinese background, I think. Uh, first Baha'i was Yankee Leong, but this was uh, Leong Tachi was okay. the same next to him, okay. second to him. Second, okay. I said, uh, what is Baha'i? They gave a laugh and said, Uncle Leong, give it to him, he has asked for it. <laughs> uh, but when he explained this uh, in an informal way, I said, Uncle Leong, I believe the, I would have said yes, and I believe in this from my childhood. Said, but tell me, is it a religion or is it a movement? If it's a movement, I'm a Baha'i. If it's a religion, <laughs> you know, uh, I have to look at it very carefully. Uh, this is the attitude I had because when I was a Hindu background uh, youth at the time, my idea was that we were as Hindus. We are like a drop falling from the sky into the ocean and as we that drop fell in existence we were just like the uh, undergoing all the tests and trials of life and but when we have a consciousness of realizing God or God consciousness then we become one with God then we thought that the idea was that we are part of God we will become part of God that, that was the idea I had. And uh, so when they talked about avatars, well, it was impressive, but uh, manifestations of God, it was not very really quite clear what their station was. 
this the difference between the Baha'is and the Hindu way of looking at it, the Baha'is do not look at God as coming into earth as a human being. That's a difference. Whereas the Hindus, they do. They look like God comes as Ram or God comes as Krishna directly, you know. In our case, in the case, in the case of Baha'i, is much later, when, when it became very clear to me that there are three levels. One is the creator, the God, the unknowable essence. If they, we limited human beings can never ever understand the unlimited expense of God. The second was that there is a, between the creation and the creator, there was this mediators the prophets of God or manifestations of God, and then the creation. So we have got the creator, the manifestation of God, and the third level, which is the level of servitude. So it is, I didn't understand this. I went along, I was very attracted to the Baha'i teachings, but I held back. Much later, after much, much trial, seeing, reading, and so on and so forth, Uncle Leong Tachi used to follow me like a, uh, like the, what he called a divine hound <laughs> <laughs> after me. And uh, finally he gave me a book called uh, Science, Mysticism and Revelation. By the time I finished the fourth chapter, I was already a Baha'i. Uh, completely convinced. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the scales from my eyes fell. And I could see clearly that God is God and we are creation of God and there can be no level of understanding mm. by the creation of the creator mm. and that, that we need a revelation. There are three levels of uh, of existence. I see I also became Baha'i from the Hindu background uh, and I went through a similar process <laughs> although I was reading uh, all the holy scriptures by yeah, the time yeah. I started reading the Baha'i literature. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I did not meet a Baha'i in person. Yeah. I became Baha'i by correspondence. I had got some books from, the, from a friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, the, some people must have come to the college I was studying in, in DAV College uh -huh. in Chandigarh. And they gave these books to my friend who was not very good at English. And uh -huh. he said, offered me these books. He said, why don't you read these uh -huh. books? Uh -huh. So I read them and there was a pamphlet which said you can ask for more literature and correspondence course, which I fortunately, uh -huh. my good luck. I pursued for two years and then uh, one day I uh, was reading the small booklet was there Commonwealth of Baha'u'llah oh, a green book beautiful. some I think 30 40 pages and very uh, different size very uh, uh, it was longish yeah. and uh, not very uh, like a book but half of the book size and there I read the quotation of uh, quotations of Baha'u'llah and they were about the new world order oh, and great. They, talked about the world parliament, yeah. the world legislative assembly, they talked about the world currency, yeah. universal education, universal yeah. language. Yeah. And I was so touched as a young man. I, yeah. I got a vision huh. of what could be the purpose of my life yes. to work for these wonderful principles. And I think, as you said, yeah. all prejudice huh. shed from huh. my heart. Oh, and really. the words of God, the words of Baha'u'llah, yeah. the words of God, yeah. They are the words of Lord Krishna or yeah. Muhammad or yes, Zoroaster yes. as we understand in the Baha'i yes, faith. Yes. All the manifestations come from the same source. supreme source. Mm. And um, that point of time <laughs> my heart said to me, oh, okay nice. Anil, this is it. Let us do it for whole life. Yes. And I am so glad. Mm -hmm. I have not regretted for a yes. second yes. that I accepted Baha'u'llah and became a Baha'i. It has been my honor and my pleasure and my respect. The highest achievement I have made in my life is to become a Baha'i. Beautiful. To work for the welfare of humanity, yeah, to yes. work for the unity yes. and love among human beings. For me, as a, from coming from a Hindu background, what was most important in my education as a Baha'i was my realization of the station of manifestation of God. Once it became clear, everything else fell into line. Number two was the fact of revelation itself. What is a revelation? What is a revelation? That was important to me. And uh, once I understood the revelation is that God spoke through his manifestation. That manifestation was the only agency through which I can approach God. 
Therefore, sometimes the manifestation says, I am God is true because it's the voice of God speaking through mm. him. So this wonderful thing of the concepts become very clear for a confused Hindu background youth, you know, at that time was tremendous for me, really. So you were talking about this uh, board that you saw in the mm. Baha'i Center, yeah, perhaps. Right, right, right. Would you like to elaborate now? What, you, what is your understanding of what was written on that board? My Can you repeat? Yes. What it was said, written? It, it was in the 1950s, towards the end of 1950s, but it was in almost all the Baha'i homes of that time, the major Baha'is, you know, uh, the, the most well-known Baha'is, in their homes they had this uh, ten-year crusade banner. It said, Baha'i, the union of all peoples in a universal cause, one common faith, and this is a quotation from Baha'u'llah's writings. One common faith. What does it mean, one common faith? It means one common, not only one common faith, one common world, one, one world faith. The union of all people in one world faith. This was my understanding of that one. And it took me a long time to understand that the Baha'i faith has principles for this world order, one world, laws, revealed by Baha'u'llah, the manifestations of God, and institutions that represent that God's will. No? Then we had principles, laws, and institutions. All three were there for the building of it. So one was the spirit and the soul of man, there was such, and the form of it in the world was the union of all peoples. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> now it's about... Uh, more than 50 years yes. or so that you More accepted the Baha'i yes. faith. Do you think that what you read at that time uh -huh. uh, about uh, Baha'u'llah's teachings, uh -huh. the Baha'i teachings, yeah. do you think some of it you have seen in your life coming true? It was a gradual, uh, as every day as days goes went by, as years went by, I became, my knowledge began to increase, my awareness increased. I looked at, this, at the faith with new meaning and I discovered new meanings almost every time. So it is a process of growth and what I know now will be much more multiplied in the future, I'm sure. As the days go on, I let, important for me though was the law of Baha'u'llah that I should do twice a day a prayer in the morning and evening and along with the prayer, to read something, some, not very long or something, something from the writing of Baha'u'llah. I realize, I realize now that if I do it very systematically, that my spiritual knowledge also will grow. And with that, my understanding of the laws and principles of Baha'u'llah, and with that, the so as I understand what you are saying, that it is very important for yeah. human beings to realize their inner spirituality, yes. the God that yes. is seated in their heart, that's, that's right. if that's we right. want to unite. Yes. Because now, you know, religion has so much controversy oh, yes, that yes. many people think religion is the cause of disunity and yeah. discord. Yeah. And uh, they have started hating and yeah. they are saying, give up religion, only that is the solution. Yes. And here we are Baha'is, we are saying, no, the true faith of God is for love and unity yes. and for strengthening the bonds of brotherhood and to establish this wonderful uh, uh, world order yes. which would create prosperity, unity, peace in the yes. world. Yes. How, how do you look at it as a Baha'i? I mean, this the present situation of the world and especially we had this public meeting on yes. communal harmony, yes. which yes. is India's greatest challenge. That's right. How do you think a religion can solve these problems when, you know, I mean, when people feel that previous religions did not succeed in this? Yes transformation. I think it's transformation. When a person realizes the spiritual nature of revelation and the revelator, the manifestation of God, and uh, then he lets that influence his heart and mind and consciousness, sure, he's going to change. There's no way you can stop that change, transformation from happening. Once you realize, that's why I used to tell my Baha'i friends, friends, when you're teaching the faith, Make sure that you, that the friends understand that this is a revelation. That we are talking about the word of God, and that we are talking about a revelator, Baha'u'llah, and that that there is a power, there is a force released into the world whenever there is a revelation of God, and this force is there 
waiting to help us. We only have to tap it, tap it sources. One thing, for example, I think uh, is important. Uh, once well, Baha'u'llah comes here, there is a testimony who he is. Once we realize that he's a manifestation of God, I think all Christians end to some extent. But secondly, one of his testimonies is the proof of his being a manifestation of God is his book. The prophet of God is the first proof, his own life. He's a man who had no human education. He had no power, he had neither financial power, no military power, no any knowledge power going to university, none of that. But then he leaves behind a civilization, a community. He leaves behind um, uh, what, what do you call a people whom he can call. This is the one that belongs to me. My people cannot think. A civilization, he leaves behind a community, he leaves behind a transformation of mankind. Mm -hmm. According to Authentic yeah, Six, right, I yeah. think uh, the Baha'i faith is the second most global faith in the world. Oh, yes, because he's, he's also a world And world. in such a short time. Yeah. A new civilization. A new civilization. He establishes a new civilization each time a manifestation of God comes. Baha'u'llah's civilization is founded on one thing, the oneness and the wholeness of mankind. Yes. And do you think you saw some change in the world and this movement towards unification in the last 50 years I since see, you became a Baha'i? I see a movement really, I see a movement and I have, I'm happy that I read the writings of Shoghi Effendi to some extent and it's very clear from the writings of the, of the Guardian, Shoghi Effendi, that there, is, there are two processes. One is a process of destruction of the old ID, ideas and the outworn ideas, no more useful in the world, and the construction of a new reality. The, for example, when Baha'u'llah came, of course he brought for them a new civilization. One of the things that he said was, from two ranks among mankind, we have seized power. At his time, it was all the kings and emperors, and the Pope, for example. Kings, emperors had the power, and the priests had the power. He said, from two ranks, from the, both these classes, I've withdrawn power. My, you can see today, mm -hmm. where are the priests today? Where is he? Mm -hmm. They're much controversial and mm -hmm. not much. Yeah. People don't have much faith yeah. in such and, institutions and the, anymore. And, yeah, and the old uh, things are changing. Where the kings were there, there were more, more, more and more democratic processes. Science and technology came to the fore, and the world shrunk. And mankind could not say, now there is an Indian solution for Indian problems or a Chinese solution for Chinese problems, but there's a world solution for all human problems. So we are all interdependent, interdependent, interdependent. soon after Baha'i yes. Revelation. This is, this, is, this is amazing. Yeah. And also, you know, as far as uh, you were talking about the revolutions of yeah. science and technology, yeah. I think one of the greatest revolution is yeah. uh, computers and internet. In mobile phones. This was pro prophesied by the uh, prophetic vision of Suki Effendi, the beloved guardian. What did he say? He said that instant communication between people was one of the yes. things that were going to happen. And God passes by. Yes. I have read it before yes. there was any mention of internet. Yes, yes. Shoghi Effendi yes, saying yes, yes, yes. that in the future communication would be in yes. instantaneous. And uh, extending the lives of people, age, the survival of people and so on, the development of the human brain. All that is said. Uh, I mean, it's really a new era. A and, new era of uh, and perhaps a new that's reality. Why, you know, the previous ideologies or or the principles that even were given by the religious prophets for that time, yes. they wouldn't hold good at, at the moment. True. Maybe even for the Baha'is like ourselves, you, you and me, say, we don't know the future. What a glorious future we have! Uh, we can't can't imagine the kind of society which we are going to. The world is going to be. That's true. Yeah. And I agree with you because to think of a world parliament yeah, in yeah. the present circumstances yeah, yeah. of the world is very difficult. Very, very. But the principle is so noble and the thought is so yeah. uh, inspiring and it's a pleasure, you know, to work for these and Beautiful. people have to work for these. Yeah. You can't just wish for them and they won't be there. You, yes. you put it in another way, friend. friends, you know, for us as individuals, we've got to look at it, that God's knowledge, God's power is there. But that power, the oneness of mankind is already a fact. But only when we develop the capacity 
capacity to implement those teachings, for example, the capacity to consult, the capacity for peace, the capacity for understanding, the capacity for knowledge, for technology, and so on and so forth. Once we receive the capacity, then God's will becomes apparent in the world. You began with one world, one people. Yes. I think that, <clears throat> I mean, I have been to some countries in the West. Yeah, yeah. And you will be surprised to mm. know that some 20 years ago, uh -huh. uh, in one of the Western, uh, the most developed countries, yeah. the, a university there yeah. put me on a racial unity talk oh, in the university. Good to hear that. And I was paid <laughs> some dollars, uh -huh. handsome amount, yeah. for saying mm. that black and white yeah. human beings are same. There uh -huh. are no... Yes. differences yeah. and we should not be prejudiced yeah. if we see a black person right. or we should not be yeah. you know uh, uh, very uh, we should not treat a white yes. person with some privileges yes. and to say that I, I I was amazed you know and I was put on a panel in the uh, university oh. amongst these edu it's the same with you know other things in uh -huh. the human affairs at yes. the moment yes. we create differences where there are no differences all faiths come from the same God. All prophets came from the same supreme yes, source. Yes, yes. All their books, whether it is the Gita, the Quran, the Bible or other books of God, they are all different chapters yes, in the book yes, of religion. Yes. And yet we see them differently. We want to see them differently and we want to use that yes. for some reasons, you yes, know, maybe yes. for selfishness and for, yes. you see, uh, to get some benefits out yes, of it. So, uh, so this understanding that yeah. Baha'u'llah has given yeah. to accept all the past revelations Beautiful. and to respect them yes. Yes. and not to talk about the differences in various religions, yes. but to talk about unifying points. I think this agenda only would be able to unite uh, yes. humankind and especially as you mentioned, science and technology would tell us that whether we are yellow or brown or black yes. or some other purple yes. or some other color, yes. we are no different from each other. Yes. 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 So I think these are the fundamental yes. changes in the thought process of humankind, yes, which have started taking root, but not quite yet. Yeah, okay. and obviously. So what do you think is the Baha'i community doing? You were talking about a huge education process that uh, Baha'is are engaged in. Baha'is are engaged in a tremendous process, a world-changing process, a transformation of the individual and the society. Of course, the Baha'i revelation has given all the things, you know, but the way, is, the thing is, what the Baha'u'llah said was that it is up to us to translate the revealed word into reality. Mm -hmm. socially. So we are going to have the spiritual teachings translated into social reality. Now, for that, we need to develop our capacities. Our capacity development is one of the programs of, of the Baha'is. Well, now we look at um, the way the Universal House of Justice is going about. It has given us an institute process where everyone is a learner. And what do you learn? You learn too many things. But one of the things that you learn is that the faith itself and the progress itself and the transformation itself is a process. It takes time and we have to develop our capacity. Once we have developed our capacity, then it becomes... Yeah. For example, I think the Universal House of Justice, the world body was given to us. It took many years before the Universal House of Justice was brought into being because the Baha'i community at the time had a world body, but it does not allow... It, does, it didn't elect itself till it had the administrative bodies in many parts of the world it had the national, the, assemblies. Uh, national assemblies, spiritual assemblies, and in these assemblies they knew how to consult, they knew how to take care of the, of the Baha'i principles in our daily lives and so on. Once that capacity was established, administrative capacity was established, then the universal of justice came into being. Therefore it reflected the entire world, because by the time the whole world uh, was, uh, was, 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 there was a teaching activity and there were Baha'is throughout the world. So we are a world community electing a world institution. But when you are not a world community, your community is confined to 14 or 15 countries in the Middle East, how could we say that we are a world body, you know, or a world faith? So it seems that the Baha'i teachings say that the essence of faith is fewness of words and abundance of beauty. So the Baha'is are, um, the, as you were saying, 
uh, they are engaged in this huge service project, mm. uh, which is the process of growth. Mm. Begins with the with children for yes. for children. There, there are, at the present moment, and we don't know what the future is going to be because everything is a process is going to develop, and we will be only be looking at it with the eyes of wonder each day of our life. The present thing is there are four core activities. The first activity that we have is how to conduct, how to acquire the capacity to conduct a devotional meeting where all the religions of the world, without any idea of their differences, come together and pray. They can pray in their own religious verses, uh, a style or whatever it is, but they gather together to celebrate one God. I think this is uh, symbolic of the Baha'i houses of worship yeah, all yeah, over the Baha'i world, world yeah, where uh, when uh, there is a time of prayer, prayer. it is not something yeah. sacred, but yeah. then there is a time for prayer. And prayer is very much encouraged, as you said, in the Baha'i faith. Uh, prayers from all holy scriptures are recited. Are recited. And this is wonderful. Yeah. It has never happened before. Yeah. And as these meetings are not for Baha'is only. They make no difference between human beings of any religion. They can come and pray. So now this concept of Baha'i house of worship uh, has gone to individual homes, homes yes. whether they are Baha'is or not. Yeah. It is but, a law this, that you should pray in the morning and in the evening. Yes. Yeah. So now the people from neighborhood can get together yeah, yeah. and they can come to one yeah. home and yeah. there. And it yeah. says in the Baha'i writings that wherever the mention of God has been made, that place is holy. Okay, wonderful. It actually, the beginning is that we are in the many of the Baha'i communities, they have this kind of gatherings of prayer, not for, because individual prayer you must do it daily. But this is for friends from other faiths and so on, from the community, without distinction. We get them in our homes or in public places and we start praying that this is usually done once a week or so according to the convenience of the society and that of the community there. The second one is that we also do not leave the children alone. The children need to be protected, protected from the designs of the world. Yeah, we can see that on the Indian television. Yes. So much violence against women, the girls and child, children. And, and it's, it's. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's horrible. I can't have any other word yeah, yeah. to see what has happened to an eight years old girl. No. Eight, sorry, eight months old girl, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in a family, uh, unthinkable. Yeah. Is it? This is a deterioration of a society that has forgotten its God. Mm. And the job of the Baha'is is for prayers. You should make them aware of God. So it means that we take the name of religion, yeah. whatever religion we belong to, or people in general take the name of religion. But actually, they don't have faith in God. Yes, that's right. You have to spiritualize them. The spiritualization process is what we call the beginning of transformation of mankind. The second one is, if you look at the children... Think, uh, by faith, we mean that mystic feeling which that, unites man with, with God. Man with man and man with God. Sure. That is, that's absolutely true. absolutely true. Once we realize that we are, that we are souls and that, that, that there is a... You see, there are natural laws. Laws like, 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 for example, if I throw this book down, it'll fall, you know, as a law of gravity is there. But just as there are physical laws, there are also spiritual laws, unbreakable spiritual laws. So once we realize that we live in two worlds, that we are two different beings, once a famous uh, philosopher said, we are not human beings undergoing a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings undergoing a oh my, human experience. What a great perspective. Uh, this is exactly it. We are in two different worlds. And if we don't recognize the spiritual nature and if yeah. we don't educate our children mm -hmm. and youths and yeah. whole society, yeah. then we become worse than that animals. Is, it's true, our isn't actions it? it's true, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? For example, I think that with many things that we do, many things, that we, anything physical, we can't do much to change the physical. We can't change the mountain. We can't change, you know, something in front of the earth that is here and so on and so forth. But we can change our ideas. And how is it? And most of the, we, our civilization, our life is built on something that's intangible. They are not real physical things. For example, if I go to a coffee shop, I drink coffee, and there's a person who is serving me. The service is understood, and I accept the service. And then when I go, I must pay something, and the value also is determined commonly among ourselves. Therefore, a piece of paper becomes a currency, 
uh, the fact that there is a relationship between the provider and the one, the customer, is also the answer. These are all ideas. And when I come home, I say I have a family, I have a responsibility to a family. Family, can you touch family responsibility? Can you say it's a physical thing? No, it's, it's, a, it's a concept. It is so the mind. transformation means a change from the lower to the higher. The fact that we are spiritual human beings. Spiritual human we are not beings. material human beings. And this education is being given to yeah. children. Yeah. And but what about the junior youth who are the most vulnerable group in our world today? It could be a vulnerable for many reasons. One, they are growing up from children to become adults. There are physical growth is there, the, the sexual impulses and so on. But the misuse of this by very powerful forces like uh, the consumer that's consumerism, 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 advertisements and so on and so forth. They bring in scientifically uh, developed techniques to influence our thinking and make us want things. To want things more than we need. Uh, to create needs that are artificial. And uh, this has, has created a lot of problems that we become materially inclined. That the world, well, well, in Baha'u'llah's writings for example, there is something called the world. The world is a barrier between us and God. By what is the world? Uh, by world is meant on our unawareness of God. These kind of things, like the advertisement, the consumer society and so on and so forth, takes us away from God, away from the consciousness that we are essentially spiritual human beings, into material. But this life has got two aspects. We don't say only spiritual. It's both a f material as well as a spiritual. A physical as well as non-material uh, reality that we are. Uh, so we talked about the for the transformation to take place to have a united world and yeah. a peaceful world. Yeah. We talked about the devotional meetings. Yeah. We talked about the children's uh, moral classes. Now we talked about the junior youth program, yeah. which is worldwide yes. and which is uh, evolving and which yeah. is experimented all over the world yeah. and inputs from the whole world. We teach the youth what to, not just to, but to tell them, to teach them something to be aware of their spiritual nature, to be aware of the oneness of mankind, to see things with a searching eye and it's intellectually understand, not to be very superfluous, you know. Like that do. is what the point uh, yeah. I, I'm trying to make. Yeah. So the Baha'is are not talking about things, yes, yes. but they are doing huge actions yes, absolutely, absolutely. and they are in connect with uh, maybe hundred thousands of yes. uh, children, youths, adults all over the world, uh, raising this awareness yeah. and that's a huge campaign for mm -hmm. world unity and world peace. Not, not only consumerism, but also politi pol politically also and in other ways, the world has got our thought. The, the thing of thinking for oneself, understanding reality, understanding our own nature, this becomes very important. Therefore, that a person should be able to think critically but without prejudice. So what do you think of this political divisions, mm -hmm. these political divisions that are dominating the world? Yes. And but, maybe you know, some people are predicting our doom in the hands of such ideologies. Yes. It is uh, part of the two processes. One is a process of destruction of the old ideas and old institutions that have gone out of date. And then the introduction of the new things that are coming. Now we should take a balanced view of both. Uh, not because the old order is there, is the old order is crumbling and new orders are in place. We should also look at the new order. There are many more countries coming together for cooperation. Science and technology has brought mankind together and we are able to converse with each other. We can send a picture or a message immediately. We can just so the person is in front of us. So I think the pain that humanity has experienced, yeah. it is actually the birth the pangs, birth pangs mm -hmm. and the rolling up of the old world order yeah. and, and yielding to the new one. Yes, yes. So um, uh, I think there must be programs for the adults as well. Yeah, the yeah. For the adults that we have, we have a special program, just like we have for children and for youth. The program is a study, a study program. It is a study circles where we consult on this essential nature of man as a society and the revelation. And do you think that families are also involved in these yes. programs? Exactly. The parents, the... It, it, when the parents are involved, the program becomes more effective. For instance, for children's program. 
We cannot isolate the children from the parents or from the family. Nor can we do it for the youth or for anybody anyone else. So when we have these activities, the more it is aligned with the families, it becomes stronger. It becomes stronger. Yeah. I think uh, it has been very enlightening uh, talking to you. So those Thank you so words much. that you read uh, uh, 50 years ago or more than 50 years ago union. in Malaysia, mm -hmm. the union of all, all the peoples. peoples of the world in one common faith. I think uh, it was not a dream. Uh, although even for me, even if it was a dream, it would be better than what yes. reality we are facing now. But I think that uh, Baha'i communities are dedicated yes. to this idea of uh, bringing peoples of the world together, uniting, harmonizing and uh, bringing prosperity of humankind. Especially now where the universal justice has given us an institute process by which we learn. We approach everything with, a, with, with the idea of learner, as a learner, as a humble learner in company with other learners. Uh, Dr. Vasudev, and the last question that I have for you, mm -hmm. you have described this great vision, you have show, given, shown us the tools that mm -hmm. Baha'is are using for the, putting this vision into practice. Mm -hmm. So would you like to tell our viewers if some people would like to know uh, more about these uh, these processes of growth that Baha'is are initiating and want to participate in them. Yes. Whom should they approach? Okay. The, the, any, when you hear about the word Baha'i, they can use the word Baha'i either in, in the internet or anywhere to find out where are the Baha'is, especially the Baha'is in their city or town or in their own village. And then make a contact with them. That's, that's one very, very good way. But... Uh, and the important thing is that they should be assured that they'll be a welcome for them. They should know that the Baha'is regard everybody. They don't say that the Baha'i teachings is for them. They don't keep a copyright on their Baha'i teachings. You know. It's for meant for the whole world. They, they because don't, when the avatar comes, he comes for the whole world. For the whole world, yes, people yes. of the whole yes. world. Cannot you know, be. Baha'is make no distinction between Baha'is and non-Baha'is, really. Except when it comes to responsibilities, spiritual responsibilities, like giving money to the faith and so on, yeah. or doing certain things, that they have institutions mm. which guide them. Mm. And under the inst guiding institutions, they have certain responsibility. Apart from that, they make no distinction between Baha'i and non -Baha'i. It's a matter of your heart. That's right. If you are, if your thought, if yeah. your belief right. is like that of a Baha'i, yes. or of the teachings of Baha'i, yes, yes. you are a Baha'i. Yes, yes, yes. There is an, uh, the labels oh. are not important. What Abdul Baha said, basically said very nice. Abdul Baha said many, many years ago, he said, a man may call, may not know anything about Baha'u'llah or the Baha'i faith, but if through his actions, he may be a Baha'i. He said, but a person who is a Baha'i, proclaimed Baha'i, whose actions don't conform to the high ideals of the faith, will not be a Baha'i. Hmm. It's and better if there is war and problems of disunity and so on, Better not to have the faith than to have, better not to have religion if religion is a cause of warfare and hatred. Mm -hmm. So the point is, I think, very strongly made yeah. that if religion becomes a cause of hatred, discord mm -hmm. and disunity, it is better to give us give up such a religion. A religion yes, and to yes. give up such a religion would be a truly yes. religious act. But, but do we also having think, said that, yeah. I think we go back to what we have discussed ah, in this yes. whole um, Yes. Uh, a, a whole uh, video. Uh -huh. uh, that is, <clears throat> and I would like to just summarize yeah. uh, that the Baha'i faith wants uh, or is endeavoring, the Baha'is yeah. are endeavoring yeah. for the unification of humankind. And uh, it's not only a vain dream, it's not only an illusion or a, a utopian idea, but all the uh, tools that are needed, all the instruments that are needed are well in place right, right. within these 200 years right, right, right. and Baha'is are making uh, though small but a very uh, important methodical hmm, and systematic, systematic process uh, impact yes. on the destiny of humankind and right. eventually people would realize their true destiny and they would start treating each other as yes. brothers yes. and sisters and yes. And then the uh, once the unity is established in the world, I think the prosperity would come. Once and then peace would come, for which we are all longing. Once mankind is empowered 
and the and has got a create capacity, develop the capacity to implement the words of the revelation, then the reality is at hand. Thank you, Dr. Vasudevan. It was a great pleasure. Thank and you. I hope that you keep on going to different parts of the country and different <laughs> parts of the world Thank and you. Uh, share your experiences and knowledge yeah. at this uh, golden age of 80. I think uh, you are a true example, a good role yeah. model yeah. for our youth and uh, for our adults. Okay. And um, the uh, we wish to thank you. And if people have any questions, our viewers have any questions from any part of the world, please leave them in comments. And Dr. Vasudevan would be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Thank sir. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.